Welcome guys, this is Short in Short on R2TV and my name is Akin Smith. Usually, you would see Ilo with the flow on this show, but right now Ilo is under the weather and he's a bit down. Right, so from me to the crew, we wish you safe recovery and quick recovery. Get well soon, Ilo is All right, we have a very, very interesting filmmaker here today. I'm not going to tell you his name because he's going to be doing that by himself. I've spoken with him, I have met him, and I have known him for quite some time. And I must say, he really is deep and he is interesting. And when we come back, we'll be meeting with this fantastic filmmaker. Don't go away. My name is Tulu Ajayi, and you're watching Short in Short. My name is Biodon Olagbaju. Um, I'm a filmmaker. Um, and my journey into film thus far has been close to two decades professionally. And um, Yes, because prior to that, I've always had interest in media. I started in the church. I was doing Christian drama. Then I grew to have interest in film, like professionally. And um, I think that, that was the beginning of my journey, basically. I opted for film consciously after some, I had a stint in the university after I opted for, before I opted for film. My passion for film um, consumed me so much to the point where I had to actually opt for it professionally and that was the beginning of the journey professional wise because that led me towards going to a film school. I was a graduate, I'm a graduate of the National Film Institute, JOS. Nigeria and um, it was it was a journey of sorts in my life because I had to prove myself first from the home front where is a conventional environment where everybody believes anything hard or creative is more or less uh, even if you have to do it there has to be um, second fidu to conventional line of business or career because it doesn't pay financial wise and um, it's like uh, it's like it's like opting for debt when there's life out there to be enjoyed so i i opted for it it wasn't funny it was not I would say I still belong to the clique of the underdog. I'm not one of the big filmmakers in Nigeria at the moment. But the truth about it, with the knowledge I've acquired and I'm still acquiring, is the fact that the journey is its reward. It's like life. You don't arrive. You have to be at work. And thus far, that's where or how thus far I've gone as regards film and my love for it, coming to terms with the fact that it's something that will take the rest of my life. All right guys, participate in the R2TV 30 day challenge. Download the WeChat app, follow R2TV's official account and take part in the daily challenge for a chance to win airtime units. R2TV, entertainment at its best. I grew up in my hometown which is the Leife Ocean State. I had my elementary school, I had my secondary education, then tertiary institution took me out because I, I secured an, an admission into University of Agriculture at Bilkuta. That was 2001. So that was how I left Leife. My dad believed you should have an education, basically because he didn't have so much. He's learned, he went to school, but would, just like every other parent, would prefer you to do better than he did. So he was 
very much interested in at least to start with a first degree for everybody. Uh, Blindness is the title of the short film. It's one of the short films that I, I was able to hem some years ago. I think it was around 2013, if my memory serves me right. And um, it happened to be the result of a group work. I went to film school. I realized prior to going to film school, there are a whole lot of young people like me who actually have this interest in learning film like really understanding what goes into what we get to see eventually at home, what goes behind the curtain, how do they come about it. And I realize part of the challenge up to very present time now is the fact that a whole lot of us we love to have the education, but we couldn't afford it. Because from research it's established that quite after medical education is media education or creative education that is quite expensive too. So a whole lot of people want to learn, but they cannot afford it. And um, we are in an environment where I think the only things that is available are the conventional, those things that have been given to us. So as a stand outside of National Film Institute in Nigeria, there's actually no other school that teaches cinematic arts or creative arts, so to speak. So. I, I went, I was fortunate you, to be able to afford it, as expensive as it was. I've always had the heart to give back to young people like myself. So that was the genesis of blindness. And um, it was a group work. I hemmed it, I directed it, I coordinated it. But it was the result of a group work. It was a practical session for a set of students that I was able to tutor in a sort of uh, clash film uh, school, basically, because I came back, I realized I had this knack for teaching people about film, so I took it upon myself to say, okay, good, let me take this one up. I know some people would like to do this, so I organized something for, and the, fortunately, they happened to be a bunch of Christian uh, filmmakers or dramatists who want to really understand what goes into film. So I organized something for them at, in my hometown, Ilefe. So we all gathered together. I remember that I had to leave Lagos for a period of over two months. I had to go back home. I had to sit down with them. I had to teach them of the little I have. I have to give back to them. We, it was a long period and it centered basically on my understanding of film from the angle of independent filmmaking, low budget or no budget independent filmmaking. So we all sat down together and we learned. I learned from them. I, they also learned from me, from idea to writing, from idea to developing it, to writing it, to coming up with a schedule, to shooting, to editing. It was a whole long period of work that paid off in what becomes blindness. And the story of blindness basically is the story of a girl who, when we are meeting, is a woman, a family woman. Uh, from the setup, you will know she's, she's a single mother. She's got a baby and her struggles through time from where she's coming from as the daughter of an orphan and how at some point she was led out of school because they couldn't afford the tuition in spite of the fact that it's a public school. They still couldn't afford to pay for the stipend they were asking for. She had to opt out of school and how she had to face life the hard way and tell herself the truth of, okay, I would like to have an education and how do I go about it? We see her at different points of our time, turning points of our time. It was a short film, it was a silent film, so there's no dialogue in it. Everything was carried by emotion, was carried by performance, was carried by light and darkness, and every other cinematic element that supports storytelling. So is, is the journey of this character from time to where we meet her. We meet her hold and her hype, 
but in the course of the narrative, we get to see where she's coming from. We get to realize her struggles as an adolescent. We get to see how she overcame her challenges one after the other. But the title is significant, basically because blindness, it was, it was more like an allusion to the fact that all that she struggles with as a result of the fact that her high is not one, so she couldn't see clearly. So she's battling with life struggles even when we meet her, all under the influence of blindness, basically. All they came up with was as a result of brainstorming, we sat down, we looked at the entire thing, I was able to guide them into tell stories that you really will have limit, limited. At first, what I told them is the fact that, and that was how I was trained, you have to master the artistry of short film before you can move into dialogue because it's part of the present mainstream challenge we have in our film industry presently. We have people who are so much aware of the place of dialogue that everything becomes talking heads, contrary to seeing emotions, contrary to seeing performances. So I was able to force them into the mindset of, come, you guys need to tell stories without words. It has to be transported through the highs, through emotion. You can have sound or audio accompaniments, but First, you have to find a way of telling a story that you can tell without words. And that was how the idea of blindness came in. And the story is about this girl who, at the moment, is a woman that's having a baby. And she's having issues in her very present place of work. These challenges she's battling with in the presence brings a recall of how the whole thing started. So, we got right in with a professional uh, screenwriting software. The script came together, I think, in a period of, um, I think, two days. I still coordinated the writing, I, you know, because they are like uh, toddlers, so I just taken their first step. So a whole lot of the entire thing still falls back on my lap. I had to finish it up on my own. I have to attend to their lapses and what they didn't get right. So we developed that from the story, from the script. We had a production meeting. We created a, short, a small crew out of them too, because the whole idea of the training session is that it's hands on. Everybody plays a part or two. So the totality of the entire thing is an experience you can go back home with. So we created a crew out of them then we went to the next stage of deciding on the talents, the cast, the suggested people. We brought them in. I took them through the whole gamut of uh, table casting as one uh, viable means of getting your actors as an independent filmmaker. You might not have the opportunity of gathering the whole cast in a particular place together, but you have the opportunity of sitting down with someone even by the corner of the road and doing whatever you want to do and you can go by the book of saying, okay, come here, let's do this. So they came around, we realized, we decided on who is who. I opened, I was quite vulnerable to the opinion so as to know what works and what doesn't work. And when it doesn't work, I'm able to tell them, come, this is why this doesn't work. This is why that doesn't work. It's a back, back and forth thing. So we proceeded to the pre-production. We sat down together to put the entire thing together. We got the equipment in place, then we went out to shoot. You can now watch R2TV online at royalrootstv.com and on your smartphones by downloading the R2TV app for Android, Blackberry, apps for iOS devices and Windows Mobile from the respective app stores. R2TV, entertainment at its best, entertainment everywhere. Okay, well, you're about to see a short film um, titled Blindness. Uh, I'm sure it's a story everybody who grew up, they had we, who have had ups and downs. 
of any forms in their life, we identify with because it's God's uh, element of nostalgia that will raise your hair, that will get you to reflect back on where you are coming from and how thus far you have walked in the whole journey of life. It's a journey. The film is about journey through time. And because we are part of the journey of living, I'm sure it's for everybody. You have something that will stick to you in it. Thank you. Welcome back, guys. And that was Biodun Olagbaju, the interesting and fantastic filmmaker. Hmm. Wow. Wow. He blew me away, I must say. Anyway, don't let me go too much. Don't let me say too much. Let us head straight to seeing his short film, Blindness. My name is Tulu Ajayi, and you're watching Short in Short.
My name is Tulu Ajayi and you're watching Short in Short. Yeah, the shooting, <laughs> just like every other shoot, you have the ups and the down, you have the time when things are going as planned, you have the time when you have to compromise and go with the flow. It's like nature, you have to just go with the flow at some point and we went with the flow at some point and when we had the magic and it happened the way we wanted it, we went ahead with it. My, because I coordinated them, my influence was so much on the whole material because I was able to tell them you've got to stick to it, whatever it is, it's like a program, you have to stick to it, you can't get to this and give up and as expected, because they are just starting, there are a lot of compromises, there are a lot of uh, uh, hide and seek, there are a lot of just disappearing because the pressure was becoming too much. But I had to encourage and nudge them towards starting and finishing. And we finished on schedule, we had the rushes, then we proceeded to the environment of the post-production, sat down, we did the post-production. Post In all of it, there are those of them who were consistent from the beginning to the end of this and there are those who break off at the way. But my own understanding of teaching and nurturing people is the fact that we all are not early adopters. There are students in your class who we act as if they don't care now, who in five, ten years down the line, they will be showing forth the fruits of all that you've deposited in them and there are those you will train almost immediately and they will stick to you. So we have all forms out of them. So basically, that's, that's, the, that's the entire process of putting the short film together. My name is Abiodun Olagbaju. I'm a filmmaker. Keep watching Short in Shorts on Hang 2 TV. My name is Tulu Ajayi and you're watching Short in Short. And that was a short film Blindness by Biodun Olagbaju. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Anyways, that's all we have for you on Short in Short today. You can follow us on our social media platforms. On Twitter, it's R2 underscore TV. On Facebook, it's R2 TV. On Instagram, it is R2 TV. This is Shorts in Short on R2TV and I am signing out now. My name is Akin Smith and see you next time.